Welcome to Windy Impenetrable Forest. This is an amazing place filled with incredible wildlife and monumental scenes. And today I want to chat to you guys about the act of taking photos of gorillas and chimpanzees. So today was a great day. We were out there. It was spectacular. We had wonderful light. But as you can see, the forest is quite dark, but it can have these patchy bits of light and understanding what you're doing and bringing the right equipment will make all the difference when you come on your safari. First thing we need to choose is the correct lens for this environment. Having a fast lens, a 2.8 lens or faster, will be of a great advantage to you out here in the, in the forest as the light is often very dark. You can have clouds overhead, it is a rainforest, we expect rain all the time, but in the greater scheme of things, we're shooting a dark animal in a dark environment. And in order to freeze action and get the right thing, we're actually having to shoot at a wide open aperture with a very shallow depth of field. And when we're shooting this, we need to consider our settings. Um, but first, the right camera. Any camera is a good camera, but the more expensive is gonna make a big difference. I would suggest a 70 to 200 mil lens f2.8 the other lenses I like to use are the 135 1.8 and the 16 to 35 mil 2.8. Now these lenses will give you varying results. 70 to 200 is bank on the perfect lens for this environment. For chimps, whether it be chimps or gorillas, it is perfect. It has speed, it has got the right length. Because we get quite close to these animals, you don't want to be too close. You want to be able to get out a little bit so the focal length and the aperture and the amount of light that gets let in really makes the world of difference to this. The 135 mil was actually quite a fun experiment that I did taking a native portrait lens that we would use for portrait photography for humans and applying it to gorillas and chimps. And the results were fantastic. A beautiful bokeh, short, small depth of field, really sharp images and lots of light, meaning I could freeze the action as we were going along. And then my 1635 is a vitally important lens for this whole thing. Reason being is I like to change it up. For 10 years, I've been doing 70 to 200 and I want different images. So using different lenses will give you different options and different results. By going wide and going low and having gorillas come past you or chimps come past you and shooting up at them, can create the most magnificent view of these animals and something unique and different. Settings wise, we need to consider the low light. So ISO is going to be something you're gonna to have to watch quite closely in order to get it right. But I prefer to shoot in shutter priority, being that the shutter speed and freezing the action is far more important to me than depth of field. Right now, the light is so low that we're gonna to have to shoot at 2.8 or lower if you have that ability in order to get something that's sharp, that's crisp, that's great to, to look at. My starting point is generally around 320th of a second, which we then use and let the ISO float. That'll probably push your ISO to around 1600 or 3200 ISO. I normally clip it off at about 6400. If you're worried about the ISO, you can bring that down a little bit more and work with it. The other thing we have to consider with all of this is that we are shooting a animal that is black. And oftentimes the way the camera is going to perceive the information is that it's too dark and it's gonna try to lighten it up. So often I will push my, or pull my exposure compensation back to about minus 0.7 or minus two thirds in order to get the correct light and definition in that gorilla or chimpanzee in order to portray it in the way it is. I also look at the histogram to make sure I'm not clipping on either side. And there's a lot of thought as to what is going to happen in post-production in order to get the correct light. And by looking at your histogram, you'll be able to capture all of that. The last thing you have to think about, and this is the most important part of the photography out here, is making sure that you're telling the story. What story are you trying to tell? You're in a jungle. Don't be afraid to go a little wider, shoot larger, 
make sure that you're telling a story, that the person who's going to look at your photographs is going to feel that impact of being in the forest with you. Look out for when chimps or gorillas look up at the sky because their eyes light up as they go through that. There's so many different facets, but storytelling is by far the strongest. And last but not least, don't forget to just put the camera down and be present. You're in the presence of a primate, of a close cousin, which is letting you into their world. Don't get stuck behind the camera the whole time. In order to get two or three or four really great images, you have to take a few. But in order to take memories, you have to be present. So enjoy the photography and we'll see you again soon.